Hello everyone and welcome back to the part two in the Digital Signatures API tutorial series. In the previous tutorial, we looked at the PSPDF kit Digital Signatures API. We went ahead and created a very basic request using Postman and then we translated the request into an HTTP request, which we used in Power Automate to sign the document and get a result similar to this. That being said, in this particular tutorial, we are going to look at the more advanced option of digital signing. I intend to add some more details, such as also work on the appearance of the digital signature. If you look out here, there is a signature field, but there's no signature visible. We want a signature to be visible out here and also back it up with a signature which can be validated against Adobe and all major PDF viewer tools. So that being said, this is the API documentation that I'm going to use in this demo. What we are going to focus on is the data field. I'll quickly copy this in, get it onto a notepad and try to word wrap it. So let me word wrap it. Okay. So what are we going to work with? We are going to work with the data field. In the data field, we'll focus on the appearance. We'll also focus on the signature types. We'll look at what signature type it supports. We are going to pass in an image as a signature. So basically a signature of a person. We are also going to go ahead and put in some graphics such that our signature looks authentic. In this case, let's say that we add the graphic of the company or the logo of the company. We will show the reason of signing. If it's true, we'll also display the reason of signing out here. In this case, it's accepted. We will pass in the signer's name. We'll also pass in the signer's location. So that being said, in the previous demo, I already showed you how to use this particular curl sample in Postman. If you're not aware, you can just quickly go here, paste it in, and this will go ahead and create the sample for you. We are not going to go ahead and use a PDF password because we are not passing in password protected PDFs. However, what we are going to work out is the data field out here. And we are going to pass in a file, an image, and a graphic image. So that being said, without wasting any further time, let's configure this in Power Automate. So I'll click on Create Flow. I'll again create an instant flow. I'll skip this. I'll quickly add the trigger SharePoint for a selected file. I'll pass in my site address. I'll pass in the library name that is real signature demo that I used previously. I'll add an action and the action would be HTTP, right? What we needed previously was we needed to get the file content. So I'll say get file properties. I'll go ahead and pass in the name of the site, the name of the library, ID, I'll say get file content, I'll pass it the name of the site, I'll pass it the identifier, and now is the time to configure our HTTP action. So to configure our HTTP action, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this reference again, okay? So let's use the reference to configure the action. And I need to use this. Okay, so I'll pass in the URL. I'll say the request is post. I'll add in a header, which goes ahead and tells it's a bearer. And then I'll just copy these things. So let me quickly fill in the blanks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use the documentation that I told you out here. I'll just put it on another screen and start filling in the blanks. So first the URL method is post. The first header would be authorization and I need to pass in a bearer. I'll replace it with the actual API key later. I'll say content type. I'll say the content type is multi-part form. Right now is where it gets into the complexity. So I need to pass in the body or I can say this is a little bit tricky. We want to go ahead and pass in a multi-part form, but as an HTTP request. That being said, you need to be very careful with the formatting. So 
to ease or to reduce the complexity, what I'm going to do out here, I'm going to pass in an HTTP body. First, I'll copy this body. So I'll copy the body and paste it here. So here, if you see, we have got the body field and this body field has got a number of parameters. What I have changed is signature and description. We'll talk about every parameter in detail in some time. But firstly, I want to go ahead and focus on the position. The position, we have a page index. So page index zero means the first page. And then most importantly, where should signature be placed? Okay, we need a visible signature as well. So I want to place the signature at 127, 328, 150, 100. Now you'll say, Clavin, what does this actually mean? What I mean to say is we need to place the signature at a particular place. Type in PSPDF kit measurement tools. Okay, so the measurement tools demo will help us go ahead and get the coordinates. I'm going to go ahead and drag my document here. Perfect. So I have dragged my document here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a scale. I'm going to say set scale, add scale. And I'll say one point is equals to one point. Okay, we want the measurements are in points. So I'll just say points and I'll say done. At this point, I can use the scale out here to go ahead and draw a line such that I get these numbers. Five is good. Uh, okay, 328 was okay, but 345 is good. Now that I have this set up, next I want to also measure the distance from here, right? From my left to the right. So I will say that let's keep the distance at around 130. That's what I need. And then I can actually create a box as well if I need. So the line of the box. So let's say that it should be at around, I would say let's make it 50 points. That's good. And then I will go ahead and draw another line. Let's make it three times bigger so that the signature can accommodate almost everything. I would say 200 is a good number. Okay, so let's move this here, right? Let me move this here. So this is the measurements that I plan to go ahead and use. And let me quickly update them in this document. So I'll say 130, 345. I will say 200 out here. I think 150 was also good, but let's put in 200. And let me say this was 51 points. So now, before I put this in Power Automate, I would rather test this using, using Postman. Always do that. It helps you better. So I can just go here and replicate the same changes out here as well. So I'm not going to type everything in. Just going to copy and paste everything within the square boxes. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to use Postman as well. So if you missed it, look at it. So this looks good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on send. It gave me a 200 OK response. I'm going to download this file. So if you see, the signature is well placed out here. It looks good. It moved it a little because the box was big, but you get the gist. Because I put in 200, it tried to accommodate everything out here. So this is good for this demo, but you also get the gist how to get the parameters set. That being said, we actually looked at the position parameter, but we should also look at the other parameters. To go ahead and do that, let me quickly take you to the article or the API reference, and this is the API reference. So we are focusing on the data, and the data will have multiple parameters, such as signature type, it is of type string, CMS, and Kates related to the security and the signature type. You can read more on them in Wikipedia. Then you have, if you want to flatten the PDF, when true, it will go ahead and flatten the PDF. Then you have got a hash algorithm. You can use 256, 384, or you can use 5112. By default, it is 256. Then you have got form fields, then we can talk about the appearance. The appearance that we already spoke about was the index and the rectangle that I showed you how to measure using the 
measurement tools of PSPDF kit. Then you have the signature metadata. You can show the, only the signature name, the signature reason, and the location. That being said, I also wanted to show you about the appearance and the mode. The mode is very important. The, in the initial demo, we use signature only. That's why nothing was visible on the document. But this time, we want to show the signature and the description. And that is what I have changed out here. The signature and the description will be visible. And the same was used in the postman. Uh, and all the other P fields are self-explanatory. I'm going to drop a link to this documentation in the description section below. Please, please look at it. It can fine tune your signature visibility or your appearance to a great extent. So that being said, so I'll go back into my Power Automate and what I'm going to do is simply take this and paste it in out here in the body section. So here you see that I have passed in the trigger body as file name. So I can remove it and actually directly pass in the file name out here. So go to manual and I'll say file name. That's it. It gives me trigger body file name. Uh, I'm passing the file content, which is the actual file content. Then I'm going ahead and passing the name of the user who has signed the document that is being returned by the trigger itself. And I'm it's in base 64, so I'm converting it into string. Same with the image out here, the, the person who is signing the document, his image. It's again coming from the trigger. I have put in a field out here known as signature. So that's coming from the signature field. So I'm getting the signature, the username. It's in base 64. Same out here, I'm passing in the username. Here I am passing in the file content from the trigger. That means it should be the signature image. So let me add that manually so that it becomes easier for you to understand. So I can say base 64 to binary. Okay, this is important. This should be binary. And then I can select the value from here. So signature con and I can say update, right? So this is important. Remember this, the signature names are the string and the signature content or the signature itself is going to be binary. Finally, I'm passing the graphics of the company. So I'm passing it here and it's coming from the get file content using path action. I'll just select the random logo that I used because I used that as a reference, not the actual company logo, which is okay. It's a bit small logo, but you get the gist of it. So everything has been set up. And those who have actually seen my previous video, they can actually tell that this is a multi-part form body and each of the multi-part has got its own header. In first, I'm passing the binary string for the document. In the second part, I'm passing the configuration of the signature. In the third part, I'm passing in the image of the signature. And in the fourth part, I'm actually passing in the graphics or the logo. At this point, this looks good. So what I can do is go to the actions. And I can say, let's send it as an email. And I can say switch to advanced mode. That gives me the flexibility to add dynamic fields. Here I'll say subject, signed document, the file name, the document attached. I can go into show all, click on attachment. I can give it this attachment name and say signed. And then what I can do is and I can put the attachment content as the body, right? At this point, I can save my flow. If you see, I have given my flow a meaningful name, digital signature advanced part two. It's saved, that looks good. I can go into the list where I have associated my flow, real digital signatures demo. I can use the same document. I can go ahead and click on automate. And I can say part two, right? This is Alex. So let me just create a signature of the Alex. Let's let me import the signature and I'll put the email address of Alex himself so that he receives the email and I can say run. 
Now I'll go back and I'll try to monitor the flow. And I guess it will fail. Any guesses why it's going to fail? Guesses, guesses, guesses? Uh-huh. If you have guessed it right, there's something that I have not updated. It tells me it's unauthorized. That means I need to update the API key. At this point, I'll pause my video, I'll update the API key and run the flow again. So I have updated the key and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger my Power Automate again out here. So run. So let's see if it succeeds or if it fails. It's running. That's good. It didn't fail yet. And it has succeeded. So that being said, if I go to my Outlook and if I look at the output, look at it. It just came in download and here if you see it's nicely signed it's nicely placed we could have placed it even better but you get a gist of it and most importantly i can look at the properties out here the signer is valid and the document has not been modified since it is being since the signature has been applied when i try to edit the pdf it prompts me the document is signed it cannot be edited and that's all good congratulations my friends you have created a digitally signed document using the PSPDF Kit API and Power Automate. I hope this tutorial was informative. In the next tutorial, we will extend the same functionality but by using Power Apps. Thank you, have a great day, and bye bye.